Hello again, this is Dr. Kingston, and for this video I'll be discussing the innervation of the lacrimal gland. The objective for this video, much like the title suggests, is to outline the parasympathetic innervation pathway for the lacrimal gland. Despite the gland itself being located in the orbit, the preganglionic parasympathetic serving the lacrimal gland actually originate in the intermediate root of the facial nerve. They're going to travel through the internal acoustic meatus and then pass through the geniculate, geniculate ganglion, which is a sensory ganglion that is associated with the facial nerve. So they just pass right through there without synapsing. Inside the temporal bone though, those parasympathetic fibers are gonna branch off from the major uh, branch of the facial nerve as the greater petrosal nerve, and then they're gonna head out on their own. The greater petrosal nerve takes kind of a convoluted pathway out of the cranium. It ends up coming back out of the temporal bone inside the cranial cavity through the hiatus of the facial canal, which is this little crack right down here. And then it runs a short little way across the middle cranial fossa to exit again through foramen lacerum. It's going to join up shortly after that with the deep petrosal nerve, which is carrying postganglionic sympathetics from the superior cervical ganglion. And together, those are going to dive into the pterygoid canal where they become the nerve of the pterygoid canal. Here is the opening of the pterygoid canal, this teeny little hole here at the bottom of your screen. The nerve of the pterygoid canal is gonna enter in there and it's gonna travel anteriorly through the sphenoid. Eventually, it emerges into the pterygopalatine fossa where it will synapse with its postganglionic partner in the ganglion of the same name. So that's the pterygopalatine ganglion, which is sitting in the pterygopalatine fossa. And that is where the synapse between the preganglionic and postganglionic parasympathetic neurons is going to happen. The axons of the postganglionic neurons are then going to hitchhike on branches of the maxillary nerve. Now remember, all the parasympathetics in the head end up hitchhiking along with branches of the trigeminal because branches of the trigeminal go everywhere in the head. Here specifically, those parasympathetics jump onto the zygomatic nerve and its zygomatical temporal branches. And those are either going to carry that innervation directly up to the lacrimal gland here, or they're first going to take a little detour to the lacrimal nerve, which is a branch of the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. So that would come right up through there. Um, this appears to be variable between individuals and investigations of how nerve fibers travel along these nerves are still kind of in their early stages. So we're not sure which is more common. And that is the innervation of the lacrimal gland. Here's a practice question for you. The correct answer here is C. It won't have any effect on lacrimation. And here's why. So the maxillary nerve, remember this is the second division of trigeminal, exits the middle cranial fossa through that foramen rotundum, comes out into what's called the pterygopalatine fossa here. If there was an injury to the nerve right here at foramen rotundum, it would not have met up with those preganglionic fibers from the facial nerve yet. So the flow of parasympathetics from here on out would not be affected at all. All right, that is the end. Thank you very much for watching.